In this video, we'll cover the main forms of contraception. The word itself means against conception, but the way each type achieves this is different. An easy way to remember them is by dividing into short or long acting and hormonal or non hormonal. You can also remember that the mechanisms by which they work fall under either inhibition of ovulation, fertilization, implantation, or a combination of those three. Probably the most well known short term hormonal is the combined oral contraceptive pill, which includes both estrogen and progesterone. Remember that the natural ovulation cycle involves the follicular phase, typically days 1 to 14, that features release of follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, leading to estrogen release and buildup of the endometrium in preparation for implantation. An FSH and LH surge around day 12 leads to ovulation, featuring release of an oocyte that could then be fertilized by sperm. The estrogen in the combined oral contraceptive pill keeps FSH and LH low, and so no ovulation takes place. They also have an effect on cervical mucus, making it thicker and less permeable to sperm. Options include monophasic pills, meaning they have the same amount of hormones in each pill. These typically come in 21 active pill packets that may be taken with a one week hormone free interval featuring seven inactive pills. This can be done to induce bleeding. Alternatively, they can be taken continuously. Phasic pills have varying amounts of hormone in the pills which need to be taken in the correct order. The percentage of individuals with an unintended pregnancy per year is 0.3% with perfect use, but the typical rate is around 9%. For context, no contraception leads to approximately an 85% unintended pregnancy rate in one year. Fertility typically returns quickly following discontinuation of the pill, which can be as soon as one week, but typically one to three months, and may also have the effect of menstrual bleeding becoming lighter and more regular, although this isn't the case for everyone, and there may be spotting for several months. The combined pill can be used for other reasons than contraception, including acne, polycystic ovarian syndrome, menorrhagia, and endometriosis. In general, contraindications to combined contraception include a personal or family history of venous thromboembolism, migraine with aura, history of breast cancer or primary liver tumours or disease, uncontrolled hypertension or BMI over 35, diabetes with complications, a smoker with age 35 and above, or someone who is breastfeeding within six months postpartum. This is because combined hormonal contraception does bring a slight increase in the risk of cardiovascular events, which includes VTE, breast and cervical cancer, but may actually reduce ovarian, endometrial and bowel cancer risk. A complete list of contraindications to all contraceptive methods is available below by the UK MEC. There are transdermal and vaginal ring preparations that also work similarly to the pill. You'll find free practice material on contraception and other topics available through Wisdolia, with multiple choice questions, flashcards, and case scenarios that give you feedback as you answer. Find the link below. Another short term hormonal option is the progesterone only pill or the mini pill. This primarily works by thickening the cervical mucus to make it less permeable to sperm and also has an effect on thinning the endometrium and preventing implantation. In around 60% of females, ovulation is inhibited. It is usually taken at the same time each day, continuously, with as little as three hours of delay being considered late with some preparations. It is commonly used in people who cannot use the combined pill, such as those with hypertension or breastfeeding, and has conception rates similar to the pill, so 0.3% per year with perfect use, but more typically 9%. And like the combined pill, fertility tends to return quickly. It does, however, have its own disadvantages, 
These include an increased risk of breast cancer and ovarian cysts. It can also cause altered bleeding patterns in around 40% of cases and amenorrhea in 20%. Contraindications include breast cancer, history of cardiovascular disease including stroke or diabetes with a vascular disease, liver cirrhosis or tumours and it is less effective in those over 70 kilos. Now looking at long-acting hormonal options. Coils come under the long-acting reversible contraceptives or LARCs and have hormonal and non-hormonal options. Here we cover the hormonal version called an intrauterine system, typically containing progesterone, specifically levonorgestrel, an example being the Mirena coil that contains 52 milligrams of levonorgestrel. The main mechanism of action is through thickening of the cervical mucus and thinning of the endometrium. Conception rates are around 0.2 to 0.3% per year and there is no user dependence. They are replaced roughly every 3 to 8 years depending on the device used. Fertility normally returns as soon as the device is removed and often periods will become lighter and around 20% of females will have no periods after the first year, which is why it can also be used as a treatment for menorrhagia. These do require a speculum exam to fit and remove, and placement features a small risk of perforation and infection, and if pregnancy does occur, it is more likely to be an ectopic. The main contraindications are suspected pregnancy, breast cancer, current pelvic or genital infection, and unexplained vaginal bleeding. Another long-acting hormonal option is the progesterone-only implant, typically placed in the upper arm. Its main mechanism is to inhibit ovulation, but also leads to thicker cervical mucus and endometrial thinning. It has a 0.05% conception rate, with perfect use as there is no user dependence. And Nexplanon, the most common implant in the UK, is licensed for three years. Fertility typically returns soon after removal and it can be used during breastfeeding. There is a small increased risk of breast cancer and around 50% of females experience changes in menstrual bleeding. Contraindications include pregnancy, breast cancer, liver cirrhosis or tumours and unexplained vaginal bleeding. The progesterone injection is another long-acting hormonal option where progesterone is slowly released following an intramuscular injection, the most commonly used in the UK being Depo-Provera. The main mechanism of action is through inhibition of ovulation and thickening of cervical mucus. Its main advantages are that it's not user-dependent once injected, but they do need to be given roughly every three months because perfect use gives a 0.2% conception rate, whilst typical use is around 6%. Fertility can take up to a year to return. It has few interactions with medication and can be an option for those with migraine or breastfeeding that cannot take the combined pill. Disadvantages include changes in bleeding pattern, weight gain, increased breast cancer risk and a reduction in bone mineral density. The main contraindications are breast cancer, severe arterial disease or risk factors, pregnancy, and those that wish to be fertile in the near future. Now looking at short-acting non-hormonal options, we have barrier methods such as male and female condoms, diaphragms and cervical caps, which work by preventing sperm from entering the cervix and thus fertilization. The main disadvantages of barrier methods include that perfect use is rarely achieved, which gives a 2 and 5% conception rate for male and female condoms, whereas typical use gives 16 and 21% respectively. Diaphragms or caps feature a typical conception rate of 12% per year. Advantages of the barrier methods are the lack of contraindications, one example being a latex allergy, and they have been shown to reduce STI transmission like chlamydia and gonorrhea, and are the only contraceptive method to reduce STI transmission. Natural family planning is another option where intercourse is timed to coincide with the lowest likelihood of ovulation. 
it relies on indicators like body temperature and cervical mucus. The conception rate is 24% per year with this method. It is not suitable in those with irregular menstrual cycles and markers of ovulation can be impacted by illness or stress. Now for long-acting non-hormonal contraception. The main example being the copper coil, also known as the copper intrauterine device. It is also an option for emergency contraception when inserted within five days of unprotected intercourse. Its mechanism is that copper is toxic to sperm, and the coil can induce an inflammatory response within the uterus, preventing implantation. Conception rates with the copper intrauterine device are under 1% per year, and depending on the type, they are licensed for between 5 and 10 years. A speculum exam is needed to fit and remove the copper intrauterine device, and this features a small risk of perforation and infection. If pregnancy does occur, it is more likely to be ectopic, and this is greater than the risk with the marina coil. General contraindications include current pelvic infection or anatomical distortion of the uterine cavity.